Welcome to Bosnia. Coming up in this week's episode. So we just seen a snake. Oh, I cannot tell you how much I hate snakes. But it feels a bit like the set of a horror film. I think I want to get some hitchhikers. <laughs> John, don't do that! And then jump off of the bridge into the freezing cold water. She's not happy. I'm not happy. And position of True Blue Traveller number two is soon to be vacant. So Bosnia has always been the ultimate destination for this trip. But we've actually taken five weeks to get here and it has been an epic journey. To a pro I'm a pro baby, I'm a pro. <laughs> Welcome back. Hi everyone. So some of you might be thinking, why Bosnia? Why is Bosnia top of my list? Well, in 1994, my dad came over here, he was in the army, and he came over here with the UN, and he was peacekeeping when the war was going on. And ever since then, it's sort of been a place that I thought, what was it like? Where did he go? And things like that. So, yeah, it's always been a place I wanted to come, and now we're here. And have you seen, this trip is all about our bucket list. <laughs> yeah. So, we crossed into Bosnia yesterday, and I was totally unnecessarily nervous about it. So we're 10 minutes from the Bosnian border, and I'm starting to get butterflies. She's sweating. I'm sweating. They're there with all the big guns, and they might want to go through my undie drawer. Don't you worry about their guns. You've got two big guns for them, don't you? I truly do. <laughs> Look at these. Every video these days, these bad boys come out. But we did have some extra chores to do. So we had to get insurance, we had to get a SIM card, we had to get water, food. So we've got all those boring things ticked off the list. And now we're going to show you Bitsy or what? It's a shame we can't get over to see them, and it's 10 euros per person to get over on a boat. So, you know us, we're tired. Awesome. The next best thing. So we just seen a snake. Oh, I cannot tell you how much I hate snakes. They proper make my skin crawl. So I said to Jess, let's draw straws to see who's getting in to see who can get the shot. So there is no straws. There's not enough money. So it looks like I've got to take one for the team. Off we go. They call me John Dundee. That was brilliant, that was. Oh, it is so beautiful. And they give you a reasonable price ice cream here, so it is a winner, winner, chicken dinner for me. Yeah, it was only £1.50 for ice cream. Mm -hmm. And that was at there as well, the waterfalls. Mm -hmm. You'd think it'd be like extortionate, wouldn't you? But, yeah. Um... And that's another reason we've come here. So there are some beautiful waterfalls apparently in Croatia, but it's €40 Euros each to go and see them. So it would cost us €80 Euros to go and see some lakes and some waterfalls. And I love nature. But I just can't justify spending that much, especially not when it's 10 euros to come here or like £8.80. Yeah, and that was, how many waterfalls were there? It was probably about 10? Oh, it's 120 metres wide, that waterfall. It's just amazing. Beautiful. Oh, she is hot. So I need to do a shameless plug as well. I said I'd never do this, ask for followers, but we was in Dubrovnik the other day. Don't you laugh? And we run into Johnny the Boss. 
and I'm jealous of Johnny the Boss because let me show you what Johnny the, the Boss does for all his followers. Yep, flat out. And he's got over 7,000 followers. So follow me on Instagram. For the love of God, people, please follow him so we stop going on about this bloody cat. <laughs> This is Pochatelli and it is amazing. It was originally a medieval settlement and fortification and it was taken over by the Ottoman Empire in the 16th and 17th century and was their stronghold in the area and continued to develop which is why you see Christian buildings and mosques here as well. It was then pretty much abandoned actually which is why it's sort of like a time capsule and walking around I've never seen a place that is so in keeping with one specific time period. It also has a bit of a sad story to tell too as some of the most intense Intense fighting of the Yugoslavian war with Bosnia was fought here because it's such a stronghold position we're on the top of a big hill with a river valley and you can see for miles and miles and miles I'll tell you one thing I've noticed as well the old buzzers, they got a bit more freedom of choice here, haven't they? Yeah. But uh, when Jess went in to get the old insurance yesterday, she come back and she was smelling like an ashtray. Yeah, <laughs> they still smoke inside uh, Yeah. I haven't seen that since I was a kid. And, and like on the motorbikes, they don't wear helmets either. And not that I agree with either one of them, but at least they've got the choice to do what they want, eh? Yeah, so. absolutely. And I am loving about Bosnia that it doesn't seem to be so health and safety gone mad. So this place, we can actually properly explore it. There's not barricades and barriers everywhere. It's basically, I think they're up to like the old human evolution. If you're dumb enough to fall off the edge of a like tower window, then that's probably what was supposed to happen. Oh my God. I just seen another snake and this time he was a big one, a big brown one. So Jess is bricking it now. We've seen more snakes here than we did in Australia. <laughs> John, don't do that! <sighs> <laughs> we did see a snake though. She's not happy. I am not happy. And position of True Blue Traveller number two is soon to be vacant. So if you'd like to apply, email us truebluetravellers at gmail.com. I didn't know you were scared of snakes. What an absolute load of rubbish. He's such a liar. I would Wake never up. have done that if I knew you were scared of snakes. <laughs> So we just seen a snake. Oh, I cannot tell you how much I hate snakes. They proper make my skin crawl. I wake up screaming from nightmares about snakes. That's how scared of them I am. He tried to push me off the, pretended he was going to push me out the bloody tower. No squeal from me, but snakes. I didn't get that for you because I had it on photo instead of video. <laughs> he is going to be the death of me, this boy. Put my window up. Oh. Oh, it's in my window. Oh, oh my God. What about the roof? What are we doing? Oh, oh, it sounds. A poor van. That was an epic fail. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose on the old park ups. Pro tip, if you're gonna go bush bashing, shut your vents. We've just pulled up to our park up for the night and um, I think I want to get some hitchhikers. Look at these little beauties. I think they'll fit in the van. Found a lovely little spot here, look at this. That's beautiful. These little dogs, they're little nippers they are. But I think we're gonna have to do a little pick because um, she's pretty bad anyway. It's a drop in the ocean, but every little counts, doesn't it? There's one thing I have to say about Bosnia, the rubbish is quite bad. 
And um, when we were speaking to a bloke yesterday, he was saying there doesn't seem to be many rules and people just do what they want. So when I was saying earlier that it's brilliant that they get to do what they want and they've got their own choices in that at the same time, some bad comes with that as well, doesn't it? So John and I planned for a little romantic dinner up at Nice Viewpoint. Uh, I wasn't going to cook tea, got bits from the bakery and we we're going to have a picky tea. I've ended up cooking, I'm a hot mess, I've made the dogs, uh, rice with carrots and chicken and some flavourings and it's now under the fan cooling while we stand by the door sweating. Restaurant a la beauty bus becomes restaurant a la beauty pup. This one over here is me, Savage. <laughs> Nearly finished. Look how polite this little buttercup is eating. That one's me. You know what makes me laugh? The hungry dogs. Look at him. He's a picky little sod. He's left his carrots. Oh. Oh. Well, the pups are in a food coma now. So I suppose John and I better eat something. To be honest, I'm not really hungry. It's one of the saddest things of being on the road for me. Morning everyone. Good morning. So we've had our guard dogs on shift all night. Anybody that came down in the car, they was barking, weren't they? <laughs> so, but uh, we're just doing a breakfast. Just yeah. doing some, what we got, Jess? Um, well, I Googled last night and it said bread's okay for them. So we've got some bread that needs eating up. So I'm gonna do them some bread because I've used all my rice. <laughs> but um, we come up with names for them last night. And this one here is a boy. So we're gonna call him Boz. And this one here is a girl. So I'll let you guess what we're going to call her. Yep, Nia. So Boz and Nia. Okay. So we left old Boz and Nia well hydrated and fed. Yeah, but we were a bit sad about it so we didn't film the actual driving away part to be honest. But we've made it now to Dervish House, which is an old Dervish monastery from the 15th century. And it's supposed to be one of the best things to see in Bosnia. So let's see if it lives up to the hype. lovely but I don't think it quite lives up to the hype. Nah for me like each their own I suppose but for me the waterfalls yesterday was 10 times better than mm. that place. I think so it was built as a place of sanctuary of spiritual refuge and relaxation and it certainly gives you that vibe doesn't it? Yeah. Super calm especially because we that would be my hot tip if you want to visit here come early because at 10 o'clock literally the hordes descend and yeah. it's so peaceful when we first well, got even, here and then I was like oh let's get out. <laughs> even yesterday when we left the waterfalls it was three o'clock I think wasn't it? Yeah. And it was like as busiest then as it was for the whole thing. Yeah so. absolutely. Um, but yeah it is really pretty I maybe wouldn't pay to go inside even though it's lovely to see the 15th century Ottoman architecture. Um, I think that you can see it well enough from the outside without paying the entry fee. But if you like a coffee oh. beautiful little spot. Yeah absolutely. Well, it's only 10 o'clock, but it is hot and that sun is biting. So I think I need a cool drink before we hit the road again. Welcome to Mostar. Behind me is Stari Most, the city's most famous landmark. It was actually bombed in the Bosnian Wars, but they rebuilt it using all the original stones. How cool is that? It's also a major tourist attraction because there are some crazy cliff divers that whip up the crowd and get donations and then jump off of the bridge into the freezing cold water, which has a seriously strong current. I think Mostar reminds me of London a little bit because when you're hot in London, you just go for a dip in the Thames, don't you? Well, you couldn't pay me for that. 
So I've been loving wandering through the beautiful old town and bazaar here. It's gorgeous, but I've been suckered in. The smell of like the grilling meat and frying chips is defeated me. So that means the noise in my ears from her going on about getting some food <laughs> has defeated me. So we're getting some food. We're getting some food. I also think we've probably been suckered because we've stopped at what looks like a very pretty little restaurant that claims to be Mostar's oldest restaurant. I don't care if it's old, I just care if the food is good. So we're pleased to note we've gone for traditional Bosnian food, which is basically barbecue. I've made Jess do this take about 10 times till she can't eat her food, so she is not impressed. Drooling, <laughs> he's torturing me. Was that what you were trying to do? <laughs> I was so annoyed with him. I forgot to tell you, we've got Shabafi and Mixed Grill. <sighs> that was so good. Absolutely beautiful, but I am so full. Honestly, I feel like I could have a little food coma. I'm gonna have to toddle my little shabappy belly around the old, old town for a bit to uh, try and wake myself up and digest that beauty. <laughs> So we've just been into the Museum of War and Genocide and I just don't have the words. No, it's crazy. Like, I didn't realise it was as bad as it was, like the war here. Like, as we've been driving around Bosnia, there's some beautiful places but then some rough spots as well. And I've thought like, oh, that's a bit rough or, oh, that's a bit underpopulated or, you know what I mean, a bit it's not barren. not super and, tidy. Yeah, and, but then when you see how bad it was, like they've done an incredible job in 30 years to get it back to what it is now. Absolutely unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. But what terrifies me is to think that, you know, when I was learning about World War II, they said, oh, it's important to teach us so that it never happens again. But yeah. it's clearly happened again 30 years ago. Well, again. really. It could, it's it, happening in other yeah. places around the world. Right now, still, that's the thing. Yeah. yeah, what humans are capable of and what fear and hatred can do is terrifying. But there was this little quote that they've got a um, peace bell that they've actually made out of a mortar shell, which you can ring on the way out. And it says, today more than ever, when fear, terror and war reign in the world, it is necessary to spread peace, love and tolerance. I've never been to a place like this before where you can really see the scars of its history, hey? Yeah, well, um, I love the way they've done their buildings. So rather than just render all the building, make it all look pretty, they've done the bottom, so it looks pretty nice, but then at the top, They've left it with all the gunshots and the little craters out of it and things like that. So yeah. you don't forget what this place has been through. And yeah, they yeah, own the history, yeah. don't they? Yeah. It's, um, I think this is probably one of my favourite places we've been on this trip because as much as it's like made me sad and made me think, the way that the Bosnian people own the history of this place, the way they talk about moving forward, um, and the way that they've kind of regenerated it into a beautiful city, it's really inspirational. Yeah, it gives isn't you a bit it? upbeat anyway. Yeah. So. So that was Mostar. Loads of character, loads of charm, excellent food. Yeah, but uh, if I'm honest, I'm a bit dubious coming back to the van because uh, when we read the reviews, there's a couple of people who've been broken into nearby. Yeah. Eh? So, uh, yeah. Crush your fingers for us, she's all right. Ah, all seems good. absolutely melting when we left Mostar today and I was determined I was going to get us a park up on the side of the river. She failed. Epic fail. They were either full drive tracks, they were already taken, too close to the road, just didn't work. So our next destination is Sarajevo 
and I found us a park up right underneath the old ski jumps from when they had the Winter Olympics here in 1984. Yeah, I got my dad to send me a load of photos of when he was in the war and uh, what, well, a couple of them actually uh, were from when they, they were camped up underneath the ski jumps. So I want to go and see if I can get like a 30 year old photo at the same spot. Yeah, it'd be so cool I think to like camp the night where John's dad camped when he was here with the army. Yeah. So let's hope we can park there and that one's not a fail. How does this feel then, boy? Strange, eh? Like, what I can't get is, I love doing this and then trying to picture it when it was, like immerse yourself in it. And to think in 1984 that somebody was going off that ski jump and like winning the gold medal and the crowd all cheering, everything like that. And then now it's pretty much derelict. It's like a it's ghost like town, a, really. Yeah, it's really eerie, yeah. isn't it? So that was that and then, what was it, 20, 10 years on, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. 10 years on from that, um, the army was here, and obviously the army don't mess about, it would have been full of vehicles, camps, and everything like that, and I think my dad was here 30 years ago doing that, and then we're here now. Just crazy how time goes on, eh? So you know how Jess reckons she's going to the Olympics, don't you, Jess? What was it again? Kayaking, Paris. I thought it was... Next um, year. I thought it was gymnastics oh and gymnastics gymnastics so you guess best and get diving best get practicing go on oh yes here we go so that was your gold medalist for kayaking and gymnasts in what year yeah. And diving. What year? Uh, 2024. 2024. So that's the predictions. If you want to um, place your bets now, you'll get rich. Uh, but you might notice the change of tyre, and that's because it's bloody freezing it's here. It's a bit chilly, isn't it? <laughs> We're melting in Mostar, and now it's like all overcast and gloomy and freezing, but we are up in the mountain tops, I suppose. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, we're going to have a, have a look around here. Have a little explore. This place is bizarre. I thought it was abandoned, but it looks like they're trying to bring it back into use because there's a new chairlift with all prices, all refurbished chairlift, with all prices on it for like coming and skiing here in the yeah. winter. And then they've got the skis, like loads of skis in the sort of the building here. Yeah. It's got two big snow machines. Yeah, snow plows. Yeah. And then like there's a cafe, but then there's big holes in the roof and like no windows. So it's all just leaking in. So I had found a little spot up on the hill, but I think we're going to stay down here tonight. But it feels a bit like the set of a horror film. Oh, yeah. well, at <laughs> so, least there's no snakes about for you anyway. No snakes, too cold for snakes. So hopefully we'll see you in the morning. Well, good morning from the ski jumps. Good morning. Despite it looking like the set of a horror film, we actually had a lovely night here. Didn't yeah, we? well, we got uh, talking to this security guard, and he actually lives here in the yeah. abandoned building. He's lived here for 10 years. But like we were saying yesterday, we were chatting to him, and he said that there's no plans to do anything with it. No. They use the cable car run for skiing in the winter, and, and that's it. So. Yeah. And he actually invited us inside, showed us around where there's like some insignias and stuff on the wall from the different peacekeeping forces who stayed here. Yeah. He made us tea and Bosnian coffee. And that building that we showed yesterday, that's where all the Olympians stayed. Mm. You know, like that, that was the hotel. So, so crazy. Yeah, but um, Bosnian people, some of the warmest, kindest, friendliest people we've met. We've really loved our time here so far. And we're heading to Sarajevo next week, so make sure you come back and see us there.